California sits on the House Intelligence Committee. Heidi Presley is an MSNBC political analyst and senior politics reporter for USA Today. Robert Costa is an MSNBC political analyst and national political reporter with The Washington Post. Well, let me go to Congresswoman Spear on this, because now we're getting so much on your plate there on a committee that has been discredited because of your chairman. But I know you're going to do the best you can, despite Nunes claiming, seeming to work in the back room with the president. But here's the question. More Russian connection here, which is the focus of your hearings. What do you make of this meeting over in the Seychelles? between the, the brother of Betsy DeVos, the new Secretary of Education, the, uh, a big contributor to the president who's over there on this mission. It doesn't look like a, uh, it doesn't look like freelancing to me. It looks like something. How do you see it? Well, I see it as one, uh, a violation of the one president at a time rule. Uh, with all this conduct going on, this effort to try and try and negotiate uh, with portfolio or without portfolio. And it, it underscores the fact that we have this incredible, unusual web of relationships between Vladimir Putin and Trump associates. And that is very disconcerting. And it's so disconcerting that it had Director Comey of the FBI come out at the hearing we had on March 20th and say, we are looking into whether or not there was coordination between the campaign and the Russian hackers. Uh, I think what we have here is one month. It's March 4th was the first time the president tweeted about being wiretapped. We've spent a month on this deflection and not yeah, well, focused on what's really important. Well, let's just moments ago, we've got more Congresswoman BuzzFeed reports now that the former Trump advisor, we know him, Carter Page, met with a Russian spy back in 2013, three years before he met Donald Trump. According to the report, Page provided documents about the energy business to a Russian operative later charged with being an unregistered agent of a foreign government. That's back in 2015. As BuzzFeed notes, the revolution of Page's connection to Russia is the most clearly documented contact to date between Russian intelligence and someone in Trump's orbit. How do you put that in as one more layer, one more relation? You're going to need a pretty complicated chart now to connect Roger Stone, Manafort, uh, Michael Flynn. And by the way, Michael Flynn's been caught not reporting the money he got from Russia. It does seem to have a lot of entanglement there. And Trump Carter does. Page. Carter Page in December was in Moscow when Rosneft actually sold 19% interest to a third party. And as you recall, Christopher Steele, who had the dossier, says that uh, part of that was payment to Carter Page. So we don't know the truth, the validity of that. But again, the, it is far too complex in these relationships. And they're all in President Trump's orbit when he was a candidate and president-elect, and now we're dealing with it in the aftermath. Hold on for a second, Congressman. I want to bring in Heidi, Heidi Presbyterian. Heidi, this is a, a complicated story now, but the, it seems now to make sense why Trump is so busy over the weekend, so festively re exercised in trying to create any distraction, any sort of firecracker can light off or glistening object to get us away from what Clem seems to be a, a rolling disclosure of connection between him, his people, and Putin. What's happening is that a web is now being spun out that we were told before didn't exist, right? And at the same time, the timing of these divergence is critical. In terms of Nunes coming out when he did, that was when Comey had pretty much blown up Trump's wiretapping accusation. So the timing of it's important. And then the web that's spinning out. Chris, this is just one story. Last week, USA Today was reporting about all the Russian oligarchs and money launderers who also have 30-party connections to Donald Trump. Is that a coincidence? Is it a coincidence that you have former KGB agent living in some of his properties? All of these indirect contacts are just yeah. basically one person removed from Trump, and we're supposed to think that this is just a coincidence. Robert Costa, you know the man. You know Trump better than any reporter I know. You know how he works. These... Uh well, a series of crazy tweets over the weekend. I'm not going to follow them all down because I know that he wants to do. talk about Hillary Clinton getting something for Donna Brazil last year in the debates. Are you kidding me? He's president of the United States. We got to talk about what's on the table right now. What's on the table right now? Is this possible collusion with the Russians in the past election? What do you think he's up to? Well, the president is known 
uh, based on my reporting, to be very responsive to what he sees on television, actively tweeting, often without consulting his top advisors. So he's watching this, seeking sometimes narratives that are not backed up by evidence. We saw that with the wiretap tweets a few weeks ago. That led the White House to try to back up some of the president's claims, even though evidence did not exist. And that was, again, stated by the FBI. So you have a president who has these convictions based sometimes on things he sees in the conservative press reacting, and, and then it's creating more controversy, in a sense, prompting people like Nunes, the chairman in the House, to try to come up with some kind of story that they believe backs up what the president's asserting. Yeah. Well, let me ask you about Trump and this whole thing with uh, Mike Flynn. Now, Mike Flynn's got some problems. Apparently, he wasn't honest in disclosing his income from the Russians when he went up for this job as national security advisor. And then you've got this thing where Trump's now saying he's at least publicly saying Mike Flynn's right to ask for immunity. Normally, when you're the target of an investigation at the top, you don't want somebody down the, somewhere down the chain of command like Mike Flynn to get immunity because the way they save their butt to get out of trouble is they sell off somebody at the top. Why is Trump, is this just clever like a fox for him to say, of course I support Mike Flynn's call for immunity? I think that's what it is. What do you think? What do you know? Well, it's certainly unusual. And here on Capitol Hill, Chris, there's a lot of raised eyebrows privately, even among some Republicans, about the president's decision to recommend Flynn taking immunity. There's a sense here among Republicans and Democrats that that should be up to the Justice Department as it pursues its different investigations about possible Russian interference in the election, that it's not the president's decision to weigh in or appropriate for the president to weigh in. So there, you don't see a lot of Republicans rallying to the president's side as he makes these kind of statements. Well, several high-profile Republicans, including former chair of the House Intelligence Committee Mike Rogers, disagreed with the president, as you said, saying Flynn should not be granted immunity. If I were the committees, I wouldn't grant immunity. And the other thing I would stop doing uh, is having all of this public attention to an investigation. If this is really an investigation, everybody needs to clam up, candidly, including the president. Stop talking about it. I wouldn't give immunity to somebody unless I knew they had something to offer. The whole situation with the... Uh, uh, General Flynn is a bit bizarre. I don't think he should get immunity. I, we, immunity for what, uh, first of all? But if there's an active open investigation uh, by the FBI, uh, they shouldn't do that. We may be doing something uh, later this week uh, related to his payments that he received from uh, not only Russia, but Turkey as well. You're just not allowed to accept these types of payments as a former military officer. Congresswoman, I take a general view of all this stuff, which is I noticed that the independents wanted an FBI investigation of the Russian connection. They wanted to pursue it. They want to find out the truth. Republicans don't want an investigation. And when I hear somebody doesn't want to give immunity, I say, well, maybe you don't want any testimony. It's very hard for me to read it now because in Watergate terms, it's clear. If you want testimony to get to the guy at the top, you immunize people at the bottom, they squeal. What's your thinking? That's the traditional way of looking at immunity. You don't want somebody below you in the food chain to get immunity because you're going to get eaten next. So that's absolutely right. You only give immunity if you're going to get the big fish. And the big fish here um, is the president of the United States. It's unclear whether or not uh, General Flynn has anything worth giving him immunity for. And this is so far in the future that um, it wouldn't even be contemplated for months. And yet, I think this is the strategy of his uh, attorney to try and, you know, put him forward in a manner that um, makes him look like he's in a good light. General Flynn has violated so many laws already, whether it's the emoluments clause within the Department of Defense, where you cannot, as a retired general, uh, take a gift or any kind of compensation from a foreign country unless you get the approval of the Department of Defense, because you still can be called back into active duty. He uh, didn't properly indicate that he was actually lobbying on behalf of a foreign country last year. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I can see why he might want uh, immunity, but I don't think there's any reason for us to, to offer him that. 